Good afternoon. Welcome to your favorite program, 60 Minutes Nigeria, another edition that promises to be exciting, incisive, and of course, keeping you updated with all that is happening within the country. My name is Erosa Agbonlao, your anchor on the show. And I must tell you that I have very, very distinguished personalities, very eminent personalities with me on set today to dissect the topics at hand. I have with me a political analyst and, of course, a very seasoned politician, uh, Mr. Ehiga Lua Andrew. Nice to have you on Good set today. I also have with us uh, a regular face and, of course, the HOD Business Law, University of Benin, uh, Dr. Joe Odio. Nice to have you on set today. Good afternoon, Good afternoon. I also have with us a former senior special advisor uh, to a do state governor and, of course, a very seasoned uh, politician. Uh, comrade Collins, Amadi, nice to have you on sex. Thank you very much. And later on, we'll be introducing <laughs> all the guests. But just to let you know that the topic we'll be looking at today, we'll be looking at the state of the nation. And of course, we'll be looking at the political imbroglio in Benue State. A lot is happening in Nigeria, and we'll be looking at that. Well, um, before we start the topic, state of the nation, let's just take this brief break. Uh, for you to see uh, a political uh, fundamental statement is one uh, statement that we admire so much. Uh, let's just take a fundamental statement and then after we introduce our other guests. Some of you may be aspiring to positions of leadership in the political arena, but the question is, why do you want to leave in Africa? The shortest route to ill-gotten wealth is political leadership. If you want to get wealth without working for it at all, join African politics. That is the truth everywhere in Africa except for very few places. The only place that stands out now in that regard is Tanzania with President John Pombe Magufuli. The rest in Africa, they hunt and gather buildings and cars and money. And that is why African leadership does not attract her best men and women. And African electorate also responds to money. The African electorate also expects to be bribed so that they can vote. And until the day we are able to exercise the ghost of ethnicity, among other things, and the ghost of corruption in Africa, Africa will never get good leaders. Okay, so the like to have you. Just joining us is uh, a legal practitioner and, of course, a law lecturer, also uh, from University of Benin, uh, Barrister. Uh, uh, nice to have you on set too. Good afternoon. Thank you okay. so much. We'll be looking at the state of the nation and uh, thereafter we'll also look at the political imbroglio in uh, Benue State. But we'll get started with the state of the nation. Um, gale of defection hit the National Assembly, hit the APC, which is the ruling party, and it seems that the media is awash with news of defections. Defections of not only uh, lawmakers now at the national or state level, but the factions of governors. The latest to happen is the governor of Sokoto State, who of course, highly respected uh, politician, a former speaker of the House of Representatives, uh, Governor Tambuwa. Uh, let's just hear what he said, uh, some of the reasons responsible for his defection from the ruling APC to the PDP, and thereafter we'll be analyzing these issues of defections in Nigeria. For the country to be freed from the street, the provision for the future 
Governor Aminu Tamua gave his reasons, uh, but um, let me ask my uh, discussants today. Uh, it's not only Tabua that is a high profile politician that has defected from the APC to the PDP. The governor of Kwara State defected from the APC to the PDP. This, uh, that's the, the party, the platform on which he won the governorship. Now he has defected as Kwara State governor. The governor of Benue State defected from the APC to the PDP. We've seen that of the speakers, this, the members of the House of Representatives. We've seen that of the Senate, the senators. And of course, another one that shocked Nigerians, the defection of the uh, Senate president. But we don't know. The party has defected, but he has resigned is membership of the APC. So that's the state of the nation. We'll get started with uh, Egalua Andrew. Are you surprised? Tambua, latest now, with all these developments in the political arena in Nigeria. <laughs> well, as a politician, you don't need to be surprised. OK. This is uh, what is synonymous with democracy. OK. Like you are aware, 2019 is around the corner. Okay. And, uh, if things like this don't happen, then there's no democracy. And uh, we should still expect more defections okay. from, uh, from PDP to APC and from APC to PDP. It's not a news. It's synonymous with uh, what uh, transpired in all political settings. But the only fear we have is uh, where, you know, one is not free to decamp to the party you want to go. As far as democracy is concerned, you are free to, it's free entry and free exit. But you and I know with the way some of them are trying to decamp now and uh, you know, threats from all corners, it doesn't go away for our democracy. These same people that decamped recently, they were PDP. And when they left, PDP as a very large and magnanimous party wished them well in their new party and pray that they will still come back to PDP, which we are seeing right now. But I, what I experienced recently is from the APC as a party, it's like, if you leave us, we will kill you. If you leave us, we will send the SEC after you. Why must you leave us? Uh, today, they will say one thing, the other, the next day, they will say another thing. That's not how to practice real democracy. We should practice democracy with large hearts. Open-mindedness, not vindictiveness, acrimony, assassination. It doesn't, it's not part of democracy that I know. Democracy, they say, government of the people, by the people, and for the people. But if you look at it critically, the way Nigerians practice their own kind of democracy is scary. It makes people that, uh, that intellectuals, intelligent people that really want to serve, to be scared to come into the scene. Because uh, you see them, you know, armed with, I don't know, with uh, you know, a, a cruel mind, unforgiving mind. Uh, did, you must do what I say. No, that's not real democracy. If, if, you, if you have to look at how it is being played in uh, other parts of the world, in a civilized way, no threat, no assassination. If you go, you go. If you want to come, you come. And uh, I think Nigeria, I don't think we are passing democracy. They are using a democracy for another type of government. They are deceiving the people. They should go back and redefine and look at what democracy really entails and what democracy is all about. It is then they will know that they are ready to practice democracy. In democracy, you don't with the judges' verdicts. In Nigeria, it is very, very common. A, a court will give judgment, they will wave it aside and go and do whatever they want to do. And nothing will happen. If I may say, if the judiciary is not uh, free anymore, like what happened there in uh, Benue State, an impeached speaker that, that has been suspended, called his colleagues, another eight members, you know, supported by Nigeria police. And if you go to the police, oh, I want to go and do an, uh, you know, uh, arrest somebody, where is your warrant of arrest? That is when the police will follow you. Okay, that, why don't you save that for the next topic? Because okay. that's, that's actually the Benue issue 
we are going to look at. We are looking at the state of the nation now, which we have commented on. But let me quickly uh, interject there and uh, make some clarifications that the comments of um, Ega Lua Andrew are his personal uh, comments, personal opinion. Uh, the APC has not said they will send the FCC after anybody. Uh, they've not said that. And, uh, but if anybody is invited by the APC after defection, if anybody is invited by the FCC after defection, that is another issue, which of course the FCC has the statutory powers to invite anybody if they have a petition against uh, such an individual. Let me just quickly make that clarification there. Okay, we'll continue on the program. Let's get the thoughts of uh, Dr. Job Odion. Now, you've seen what is happening. Yeah. Yes. Um, Mr. Andrew has made it very clear that it appears some politicians are afraid to defect. I think that's the point he's making. Do you think that exists, or you think what is happening now is a norm? Well, I think maybe, maybe to put it in that perspective, I think what he's saying is that maybe some people are afraid of defection. Some people are scared when their members want to defect. I think that is the point I, I Ghana he made. But with that, may, like we have always observed, uh, he has also uh, confirmed defection is the norm of the game, at least in this climb, in Nigeria perspective. Politicians are known to shop, forum shopping. They shop for platforms to contest elections at every now and then. And so you want to ask yourself, why the coincidence? Why is all this penultimate a year or some months of election that we have this scale of defections? I saw in 2014. Tell us that it's for purely selfish reasons, not for altruistic reasons or any nationality reasons. Purely platforms to contest. If you agree with your godfather, you move on to the next party. If you agree with your, 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 your party, you move on. So it's purely uh, selfish and some of the very mercantile uh, uh, schemes that our producers are engaged in. That is why it's laughable. Some people are applauding what they are doing. It's shameful. In the US, and that plan, so we borrow our democracy from. We don't defect like this. We don't, they are consistent based on ideology. There are persons you don't agree with. On principle, you can never uh, be in the same party with them. There are persons you don't even agree with. You want to take a bus with them. You think they ride with them. It's a free ride. You say, I can't be this car with this because this person is evil. Or, I don't agree. That's how politics should be. It should be consistent. And if there's a, if there's a, if there's a convergence of, of, of ideology, convergence, and you have the Tea Party you have in the, US, in the US and other parties that are in between, you can look at let us break into the, let us converge. But when you have two opposite sides, like you have the Democrats and the Republicans in the US, it's hard to have a meeting point. And so it's like asking uh, the Clinton tomorrow to sponsor the son on that Republican Party contest because he wants to be governor of uh, Akasa. So that is what we have in this country. It's shameful. And what is most shameful is for us that, you see, when you, you have a right to defect the constitution, like I said, as it is now. Okay. But when you hold public office by virtue of a political party or a platform, when you want to defect, your first step is to resign that office. So back that office. So you become a free agent. As long as you carry the baggage, the text of office that the party has given to you, the platform, not your platform, your electorate, it has based on your, your the platform. Because we don't vote for individuals here. We don't have the... Uh, independent candidates in this country. We don't yet. So, con constituents, voters vote for part political parties. When a party sponsors you, it's an election you win and you occupy a seat. No matter all the legal gymnastics that have been going on, I've been there. So, I won when it started. Some of our researchers did it. Raised an eyebrow. So, I won. We have the Sumo, uh, I think, Kuyumi and some AD uh, senators. And they, they came to PDP then, who clapped. Someone said, this is, this is a dangerous sign. The last time we had this was in the 60s. In the 60s. And that was in the 60s. So, so because we said they were smart. They said they, they, they had to sign, we had to sign an, an undated letter of resignation. That happened between Chiki Obin and uh, the speaker of the uh, Jalo Waziri. And my scholars of law will know that case. Very important. Because they said, once you defect, the very defect, they go and date your letter of uh, resignation to prevent you from defecting. You, you apply to minister. You, you give a letter of resignation undated but signed. That was what led to that court case that I went to Supreme Court. So what we're talking about, so it means parties had always involved in the way you don't the camp and hold to the position you are. But because of liberalization, 79, the constitution came and said, okay, yeah, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a division, there's a faction, and all that. But the Supreme Court has interpreted to me that it's not just a faction, self-induced faction, patronized faction, but be a faction that cut across the states, not just some uh, chapter. So this is a bit defined, but the, 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 the principle is this, the moral is this. You are free to become. And I think why parties are, 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 are maybe boys start when people become like yourself is when you hold our position. 
I'm not sure if any other, if any politician who is a free, like, not even the camp. I didn't see a, a, a APC in the bus over here in camping. So it wasn't only really a political office, only really public office. But you expect a party to be angry when the governor, mm -hmm. the start when the camps on that party, goes to the platform with the purpose of office, the power, and the right to the other party. You expect to, be, to, to, to get worried or to act maybe desperately when they still present the camps. Because we are not in the part of the office. So, so when you talk about people reacting to the campaign, it's you ask why are people reacting? Because you hold an office on trust of the party, the electorate. Who are we in the campaign? Or people moving up and down, across, across. But nobody has, some of this heated up. Why the heat? Because persons who were elected on the on trust want to monetize their office on political platform. Okay. Which is not good enough. I want to stop that. Okay, thank you, Dr. Joe, uh, for taking us uh, down memory lane and, of course, citing some uh, cases. Uh, I know that um, legal luminaries, uh, <laughs> those of the bar who are watching, will be giving their interpretation uh, to what Dr. Job has just said. But we have another legal practitioner uh, with us. Uh, let's also get our thoughts on what is happening in Nigeria now. I want to concur wholly with uh, what my very senior colleague said, okay. in, in the interpretation legally. Actually, when you, when you are appointed from a political party, when you are voted in by virtue of that party, you are actually holding that position in trust. And so it, it's not legally right for you to now resign from that party and go to another party when you were voted in by virtue of that political party. But be that as it may, looking at the situation presently in Nigeria, I want to say that uh, I, I feel it's a very good sign towards the uh, 2019 uh, elections because Nigeria as it is now, we are gradually tilting towards a failed state. In fact, if you want to look at it objectively, looking at international index and categorization, Nigeria is categorized among the 15th, uh, the number 15 failed states in the countries. Nigeria, we have a lot of issues bedeviling us. And then it's, it's, it's the, the, the way the political system was fashion whereby APC was completely in charge. I feel it was unhealthy for the present uh, political terrain. When people are defecting like this, you now have some kind of a very viable opposition. And all of this is going to show down seriously during the 2019 election. 2019 election is going to be like clash of the titans. It's not going to be a walkover like before whereby the, the, the person with authority has all the might and power to rig and do whatever he wants to do to win elections because at the end of the day, Nigeria is supposed to be for everybody. People are going through extremely difficult times in this country. In fact, the kind of difficulty they are going through in Nigeria, I don't think they have ever experienced it before now. So things must be done differently. Where people are defecting, the, the, where you can also defect now because when you have a genuine reason, you no longer believe in the ideology of your political power, then you can defect, provided it is for the overall interest of uh, your members of your constituency. But at the end of the day, when you look at those defecting, what is the rationale behind their defection? But looking at the terrible state of Nigerians' uh, political terrain, I want to say that, yes, the rationale for their defection may not be good enough, but I want to say that it's good at all that they are already defecting, so that at least we can have a balanced system to physically tackle the 2019 election, so that at least they will know that there are checks, there are balances, when things are not doing well, it's possible for defections. In fact, I was particularly happy when uh, this, uh, uh, Saraki took that bold step to resign from APC. It, it, it's laudable so that we have appropriate checks. Things should be done, things should be checked because this is a country people are dying every day, killings are going on every day, nothing is done about it. Yet the country, the political issues are, are the front burner. When issues of life and security, they have put it behind us. Look at the election that took place at that time in Ekiti State, where they deployed up to 30,000 police people. Have they ever done that in any of these states, facing the uh, headsmen, the uh, crisis and all of that? So our priorities as a nation are not well placed. And part of the reason is because of the large uh, financial inducements associated with political office. They should remove all the plenty money and authorities associated with it so that we can have patriotic individuals. And the sad thing is that it's the same set of individuals recycling themselves. We don't have new faces. And then how do we want things to be different? We are all crying Nigeria is bad. The same set of individuals are some assaulting, changing from party to the other. How do we expect to see what will make this better for us in 2019? <laughs> Thank you very much, Madam. So uh, she has just uh, construed or uh, depicted 
uh, what is happening in terms of the defections to be some assorting yeah, well, of politicians <laughs> in Nigeria. <laughs> well, that's another dimension to it. But let's get a thought of uh, a politician on the issue um, off camera. We're talking about the, the lifestyle of a normal politician. So they know what is happening so, and, and they can interpret it better. So what's your reaction to what is happening? Tambua is the latest. Senate president has resigned. Nigerians are waiting. Is he go going to which party now? Yeah, Some prepared. governors have left. So, so what's your own reaction? Yeah, thank you very much, Egosa. Firstly, I want to thank Madam for truly being who she is, really. And from far, I've, I've heard much about her. And with what she had said, I'm very, very addicted. But just to see what is happening today, for some of us uh, who are party faithful, who are in the party, in the APC, who is actually passing through these challenges as it is now. To us, uh, to some of us, it's a challenging time. Uh, but to some other persons, it doesn't matter. Uh, maybe because they are not uh, uh, consigned enough. Because for one who believes in democracy, uh, you should be consigned because democracy is all about number. Uh, take it or leave it. Whether you call them small or uh, and, uh, people with high capacity, because sometimes they classify some persons to have a lot of muzzles. You know, why others doesn't mat matter. Uh, it's quite painful uh, that uh, our leaders are used to this uh, moving and moving and moving. But in recent time, I've also done my own research and evaluation and find out that. You know, some of this decamping thing, it's not deliberate. Some of them do not deliberately want to do it. You know, some of them are being pushed, you know, to not having an alternative and to also fight or, or pull for security and, and, and uh, persons who can defend them when need be. They have to find an alternative, you know, because people like us have been clamoring for a very long time when after one year of the leadership of Mr. President, that our party leader should look inward. And the, 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 first, the first team that are in the field are not doing well. Because take it or leave it, no matter the hardness or no matter the personal relationship between the Mr. President and some of these people, if we have had good governance as it were, and the party is flourishing as it were, when it comes to delivering to the common man, when it comes to um, um, amplifying and delivering on promises made, you know, to the people during uh, uh, the campaigning time, you know, during the electionary campaign. I tell you, no matter the, 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 the error injection you inject on some of these people, they will not want to leave. They will still try their best to see how they can get a ticket in the party because they know the party is flourishing. The party has a name that is astounding. But in a situation where they either they ganged up or sometimes they were not allowed to be part or sometimes they just watched the system fail completely in order to excuse. So this is the result. Now they already know that the party on its own is struggling. Now there is no there is nothing really definite, you know, to carry now we as party member to really use in shouting. The best some of us or we can do now as party member is to say, has PDP not failed before? PDP failed for 16 years. So what's the big deal? And that's not what was promised to Nigerians. So in all share, you see a situation where people will not respect rule of law because some of us were part of this advocacy that yeah, let there be change. Let us have a working Nigeria. Because we believe that when this administration come about, for example, there will be, there will be concurrent to rule of law. There will be obedience to order be given, either by court or by the president himself. A situation where the president will give order. Some set of people will not obey his order. And they are still sitting there with impunity. You saw, we saw impunity at the highest level. We were not, we were not, we were not, many of us are not happy with this. And we're not happy with this. And when we, when we finally see things like this happening, we just knew that it was just a dying day that was already pushed a little bit far but it will stay calm and it's just coming and they are living uh, we wish them well sadly is the fact that how can a publicity se a secretary of the party how you know you to that? just okay. exit just like that you know you've just been inaugurated less than three months and you now you have just found out there have been problem and you cannot continue to remain there and that simply means the party as it were now the leadership of our party had to sit down and think and areas where they have not done well. Now, I, I, I overheard uh, uh, the national chairman of our great party, my leader, my formal boss,
talked about some persons who ought not to be in different agencies and institutions being there all this while long. Some of us have been screaming it all the time. For like one year we'll be screaming that there are a lot of these agencies that the government need to look in. People who have your same idea, people who we believed, you know, you propagated the same agenda. Bring them in and let them key in. But they refused because they, they felt people who joined them in governizing for change cannot be the same government. Now, there is already a stream right in their front. Let them jump in. Now, let, let, let me cut in uh, before my other discussions will uh, comment on this. Now, uh, the APC Publicity Secretary, the National Public Secretary of APC, uh, Abdullahi, uh, at first, we heard that he has resigned, but he came out to say, no, he has not resigned. But only yesterday, officially, he resigned. Now, do you think it is an indication that APC is cracking or APC is going down? Let me ask you, um, an APC man, Colin Zamali. Uh, thank you. Yes. Uh, for some of us who believed in his capacity, I liked him as a person, and I believe the way he has been doing his job, he talks less and he talks when it's important. And I saw people like him as people I can that can I can role model, you know, in his own in his own life, in his own kind of lifestyle. But just to say he has left, you cannot tell me it's not a minus. If he has left and he had one vote from him, his wife, and his son, that's three votes. He's already a minus, take it or leave it. And it's just for us as a party now, see how we can put our heads together. And don't go pushing others more to taking decisions they ought not to take. Because sometimes when you hit, when there are problems, I agree there are problems, and let's see how best we can solve it. It's not compulsory we must win presidency again, for example. But if God said we will win it again, let it be. And that is why the, part, the party now must look inward and search for a candidate with capacity, and search for people with credentials, people who have what it takes to lead, not just one chance system of government, where because this person has said he will run, another person will not run. And that will be an error. If they continue in that light to say that, we, hey, for example, Mr. President wants to run, because Mr. President wants to run when he has not delivered, Mr. President must run and any other person must not run, then you should expect the party to completely fail as a result. Okay, we just saw uh, the picture of Abdullahi just now. Uh, let's get your thoughts, um, Andrew. Now, APC Publicity Secretary, don't you think that's a, a very huge, that will have a huge effect on the party? Do you think so for the Publicity Secretary to, to quit the party, to resign from the party? Mm -hmm. Well, you, politics is a, a game of the more you look, the less you see, or the, however you look at it. For the National Publicity Secretary of the party to resign is a big blow to that party because it's the eye of the party. And you, like what they rightly said before, in politics we have godfathers that will tell you what to do, which is subordinate. If I go here, you must come here. If you want uh, this APC, Police Secretary of the Line, mm. even Kwara State, Saraki State, I don't know if you know. Sure. Now the boss has left. What are you still doing there? You know, one thing I observe in APC, which is not in PDP, is that as long as you defect to a party, everybody becomes one. No more division. You are not carrying the party's card. But what I observe in them is that uh, APC is a new party, for God's sake. I think they are still crawling. That majority is not there. There's still that uh, uh, you know, isolation. Uh, acrimony to say this is P for, uh, new PDP, this is former P APC. Was there any APC before? <laughs> Was there any APC? Are they not all from PDP that formed the APC? Not all. Most no, of them. Most, most of them. 80% of them. Different of them part of APC, you had CPC, yes, 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 yeah. Yeah, you had ACN, you had NDP. Of course, I know, I know. But 80% <laughs> okay. of the current APC yes. are members of PDP. But when they came in, they saw that uh, discrimination. They were still using the R of PDP to look at them. And that is what is transparent. And I think that was one of the major reasons why Saraki said, you have to go back to his former party. This is not how he was treated there. Forget about uh, uh, power and all that. At times, when that sense of belonging is not given to you in an organization, forget about your position you are holding. You better just go away and go to where you will be recognized as somebody and stay put. I cannot imagine, I don't want to mention names, yeah. just assume power. You know, I said, 
all uh, persons holding position from this party, their, their position should be withdrawn. Is that a statement? Is that a, it's, it's doesn't go away for democracy. And this is a party whereby, like he said, one person exit is a, is to affect the party, whether you like it or not. So we should, we should try to harmonize ourselves. That is why I like PDP. It's my party. We were patient. We were with, it was, it's a doomsday. And it has come. And it will come, continue to come. Doomsday for APC. For APC. That's the way we are going. We are working on ourselves. We are working on ourselves. We are working on ourselves. Mr. APC. So, you will show me the act. If you watch Amino Tambua in his speech, he said, I'm back home. Where politics is actually played. Forget about him. I don't think he's coming because of presidency or whatever. Sense of belonging. Yeah. Carry us along. Tell us what is happening. There are certain positions in a party that you hold. You are a member of the CACOS. No matter the that are taking, you must be invited. But I don't see that happening in APC. They are still using the eye of it. It's PDP. Don't call him. Why? When somebody has defected, renounced publicly, carried your own uh, broom, uh, tore his umbrella, you are still using that eye to look at him that we don't trust him. No. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dr. Odio, APC Public Secretary leaving. You think it's a sign that the party really has uh, a crack? Well, well, thank you. The position has said it all. Uh, okay. uh, let me just stand on what they have said. I can call. <laughs> okay. When you do the, like I said, the mouthpiece of the party, yeah. the, of the party, it's, it's a big deal, really. Okay. But given the, given the background to his leaving, too, because he's the leader of the Saraki, it means that it's, it's uh, allegiance a little bit of Saraki, not the party. So that also is a double speak. So it's also a question mark on the uh, integrity and whole public office or party mm. office too. It shows that his allegiance has been to Saraki, not to the party. He has not told anybody why he's in the party. We don't know if he wants to follow his master. No, he has it's, said. Uh, okay, okay. Well, the reasons he has punished are uh, purely personal to him. So, but what I'm saying is that if you hold a position at that level, like he said, it's just inaugurated. If there's any problem with the party, you ought to address it before leaving. You ought to address it. And if he has said, I've been trying to address this problem, beyond his claim that he was being bypassed or something, I don't know how that is. I think we should also look at that issue of loyalty too. It's important. No matter how much you want to be care about problems here and there, if you swore and ought to uphold the party's position to act as a functional public secretary, the manner in which he left this news of, uh, of uh, the, some questions. Okay. Barrister Dogo, well, do you think uh, what is happening to APC might affect the fortunes of the party ahead of 2019? Ah, very well. Uh, in fact, the, 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 the ceremony of uh, the defections now from APC to other parties is a pivotal pointer to the fact that there is serious internal crisis within the party. There is a fundamental problem which is relatively new to the party and they should address it otherwise. This issue of defections will continue unabated and it's going to be, it's going to uh, spell uh, a lot of, uh, neg it will have a lot of negative impacts on the ability of the party to secure votes in a 2019 election because when people in a party, they start to defect, they, they, they start to revolt, they start to resign, you know that there is something fundamentally wrong. People are not happy so that even those remaining, if you don't check what is making them defect, if you don't check what is making people agree with the party, it will continue and at the end of the day it will definitely affect whatever they will do in 2019 election so it is it's for the executives in APC to look internally and go back to the drawing board and look at it where did we where did they go wrong maybe in policy making in ability to carry people along people have been offended because people will actually defend for for personal reasons, of course, when their egos are affected, when they are offended, when uh, the fundamental policies of the party is, uh, is no longer being carried out, people will definitely defect. And when they continue like that, it will definitely have very negative implications on the ability of the party to secure votes in a 2019 election. Thank you. Election. So we don't move straight to the next issue uh, that we'll be talking about, and that is the political imbroglio in Benue. That is in focus. I will start with Comrade Collins Amadi, uh, a politician, um, looking at what is happening in Benue State. Now, the governor defected from the APC to the PDP. The next thing, we understand that the House of Assembly, where the former speaker, or a speaker was impeached, and that impeached speaker with uh, seven others, 
took uh, or converged on the Benue State House of Assembly. They were prevented by youths. That was the information we got, but the youths were dispelled. Why the other 22 had theirs in the government house? Now, the next thing we heard is that these eight APC lawmakers have served impeach impeachment notice on Governor Otto. What's your take on this? Uh, truly, you expect someone like me who believe in democracy and who mm. believe in rule of law uh, not to applaud those kind of disposition being exhibited by very few members okay. who believe that they have to show those kind of rascality to prove that they are loyal to the party or loyal to a particular leader. That is not what ought to be at this very century we are in. It happened some time ago. We were, I was one of those and many others who believe in true governance you know, uh, castigated those kind of democratic system and were very angry that Nigeria ought not to be practicing that kind of system. And for it to be happening this time, you know, in our time, after we have brought about change, and it, it, it doesn't, doesn't all go well. So certainly, I don't want to see those people as APC member or faithful APC member. I want to see them as desperado and persons who just want to create a, a very cheap popularity where it ought not to be, because that is an art of wanting to bring about an anarchy. And only that kind of action, more especially when the situation in Nigeria finds itself already almost being at a gunpowder. And that only that place can spark off you know, the entire nation. And before you know what's happening, everyone will begin to run head past scatter. And before we try to trace where the error is coming from, it would have been late. So I think every good thing, thank God, I think the court has made pronouncement of that, stopping every action or whatever action they intend to take it, you know, as it concerns the governor. I don't want to really blame the governor for even defeating in the first place, though it's painful that he's leaving my party. Uh, one, there was some time ago when the wife apparently led some team of women you know, putting on black on black and protesting uh, around Benway. I even led Benway to Abuja, you know, directly calling on Mr. President to speak out, to say something. We are in your party, and this thing is happening. Killings everywhere. No, 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 no federal government press. It, it, nothing is shown. It's not just to bring him in here. For example, I'm here standing. The next two, three minutes, I'm in this here. Some other troop comes and they start killing. No! These are areas, there are a lot of recommendations, as I was told and as I saw on TV, that was being made on how they can call these people. And you know state governors are just secret, chief security officers on paper and per se, but in action, they do not have capacity, you know, to display uh, the, the, the gains of being a chief security officer. What can he do? Can he control commissioner police? Can he control the army? What level or what segment of the security agencies can he control? No. So his blame are very minimal. And the anger with the people from Bornu, uh, Benwe have always, Adamawa have always on this role of how come this level of insecurity and the federal government is not doing enough because it's not to say you send troops and give them a lot of allowances through the taxpayers' money, through their locations, you pay more security money and say you are, you are, you are directing security uh, money or security issues and there is no result to actually be point. There must be result for anything you know you put your If it will get better consultancy outside this country to come and help us, look inward, regeographical re re Nigeria. Look at the areas we are in that are flashpoints. Unless something be done, is it persons that are aggrieved that continuously have refused to rest? How can we come in and talk to these people since they are overpowering us? Take it or leave it. These people have overpowered the government since. They have seriously overpowered. And you do not expect that same governor, for example, to be realistic and be sincere. You expect that same governor to be in a ruling party where his party had the federal mind and the federal power, both in resources and in capacity, to assist to combat all these ills that are happening, and nothing is happening, and nothing seems coming, and you expect such a man to faithfully, out of party loyalty, to remain there, when those party leaders who today are pursuing from left and right, never came out to speak out, to say what can we do, they never made recommendations, they were all there looking for money to share, and now they want to start distributing all your blocks and what have you. No, there must be things that must be done rightly, and for us to get things work, we must see Nigeria first before party. And I think or Tom and his wife, to their own very capacity, they cannot play. They have cried enough to the extent they made it public, so you wouldn't say or ask them tomorrow. What did you say? Did you confront the presidency? And they have done a lot of confrontation, okay. and no result had come. And, and he has left, and I wish him well in his new party, and I hope his new party can assist him 
now that he's still the governor within some period to bring some change. Maybe by then, the people will understand that maybe within his party, some persons were trying to also sabotage him in order for him not to get re a, a, a recontesting tickets. Okay, so that's the uh, speaker that addressed uh, the media. We don't have time for that now. But let's get the thoughts of Andrew. Um, some lawmakers planned or served the impeachment notice on Governor Autumn. Um, don't you think they have the right to do that? First and foremost, I would say such a thing is scandalous. Okay. Scandalous in the sense that, one, the person that's beheaded that impeachment is a speaker that has been impeached and suspended by the House. And in law, let me use the opportunity to address or to appeal to our judges and the judiciary. They should please sit up to their responsibility and not to be cajoled or rather corrupt to obtain judgment. They should face it as it comes. Because judiciary is the same, that's the public government. How can an impeached speaker reconvey seven people, including himself, to now serve an impeachment notice to a serving governor? And it's, they were led by a truckload of police and army. Where no, I those are allegations we cannot substantiate. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. okay. Then, how would such a thing have a headway? What, what I think is that for such a scandalous thing to take place, that impeached speaker should be summoned and be prosecuted because he has been suspended. He's not supposed to have anything. Go close to that House of Assembly. Don't talk of converging. And, for, and moreover, they didn't even form the poll. They, they were not the one thought. But because of some forces, I think some forces that engineered that thing, they, they went ahead. But I think uh, the, the, the judiciary has come to say it is null and void. Please, please, please. They, I think they, they, they should enact some bylaws that anybody after a court judgment has been passed, anybody that brushes aside that judgment and goes against it should be prosecuted and sent to jail. Otherwise, yeah, that's contempt of court. Yes. It, can be, it can be established. Yes. It's contempt of court. Otherwise, the politicians will rubbish the judiciary the way things are going. They will rubbish the judiciary. I, I have to give kudos to the judges in Imo State. You see what happened in Imo State? Okay. There was a court judgment. The deputy gov uh, governor cannot be removed. They brushed it aside from the Kangaroo this, uh, this thing, uh, House of Assembly, and impeached the gov uh, deputy governor. When a competent court of the have already said, this man cannot be removed. If the Imo judges were corrupt, they would go ahead and swear in the new deputy governor, just like that. But kudos to them, they said no. And it is in, in the Constitution, a judge must swear you in. That was where <laughs> Ogad had no alternative than to respect the rule of law. Is it now you want to respect the rule of law? Is it now you want to respect the law? When the, the same rule of law said, this deputy governor cannot be touched. They respect it in the initial stage. You see, the, the whole thing is, uh, you know, I don't know, I don't know. And these are people you think... You are disturbed. I'm okay, disturbed. now let's get the thoughts of our legal practitioners who can really explain this and put this in uh, a better perspective. Now, uh, speaker plus seven lawmakers in Benway, what they did... Impeachment notice seven of the autumn. Is it within the ambits of law, Dr. Dion? Thank you very much. Well, uh, I, I will not speak as a lawyer per se because there are no legal issues really at uh, uh, the front burners now. Everything is about speculation now. Uh, but let me just say that uh, literally on the face value, what they did is very wrong. And I guess that's why a lot of people are condemning what they have done. But again, for all lawyers, and I'm sure the courts, when facts are brought to bear, we to look at the underlying factors that have uh, led to that kind of action. Now, and we also want to look at the historical perspective. I always say, we've seen this is happening before, there are precedents, and how have politicians come around this kind of scheme to do all these things that we all condemn? Rightly or wrongly, but for the uproar that followed, we have seen that man impeached by eight members and he ends up in court. So just thank God that the uproar and somebody, well, fast and, and somebody up there too. To put some, uh, some uh, post button on what they're doing. In truth, when we talk about impeached speaker, you can't say that I wasn't impeached because 
look at if you listen to the some discussion on channels, the, both versions both the, both, they came with different versions. One said we had a Kagaru uh, housemate and he pitched me. Yes. Because I have adjourned since they died, I adjourned in August uh, 15th. Just the senior president I adjourned in the, the Senate now till God knows till September. September. <laughs> so why can I say that some people will not go and pitch it tomorrow? And they say, like, if, if, if it is a pitch tomorrow, some people will say okay, it is it is wrong, is that also it is wrong to be the senior speaker, senior president. But that will happen in Benin State. The man was speaker, he said I adjourned plenary to August 15th. And without recourse to him, without recourse to the clerk of the house. The two members who were loyal to the government because they already made their mind to go to the PDP. They convey the house, tell the speaker's uh, concurrence, and then claim to have impeached him. And the deputy speaker and the deputy uh, speaker starts. So that's what the man says, de facto, I'm still the speaker of the house. You get the point. And so what they now felt they had to reconvey as a speaker, he says, that speaker, he now came, and then the first thing was to suspend the other two members. Once you suspend the two members, maybe the other two members have two members. Have two members. <laughs> <laughs> so when you now talk about eight members, eight members, majority, who are the majority? Because the two members have been suspended. So for the purpose of, of, of forming the quorum, we have only eight members. For the purpose of uh, issuing a uh, uh, picture notice, we only have eight members. That's the final member. So you should, when, you, when, you, when you can't lose the two members, assuming that it's a minority, it's illegal, it is wrong, because we are uh, on the field. But when we come to the legal issues, it passed before the gods. Were you the facto speaker? The jury speaker? Who is the speaker? So those are issues the court will want to look at. So it's not, it's not what to just conclude and they also want to uh, believe that judges uh, compromise, but it's not true. When lawyers or judges we look at it deeply, deeply, we don't look at it from the surface value. So those who met that day, the eight members, say, we have a right to meet. I'm still the speaker. We have a right to meet because we have already submitted to the two members. Others are meeting in the government house. We are meeting here. So which is it's happening in our state here. We don't want to go through the details. That's why it's happening in our state here. No, 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 it's happening. So, so those state members believe they have a right to sit because they have supported the two members. They form quorum. So we we'll also sit down and just uh, ban, ban the world that it was wrong, it was condemnable. Those things are politicians. If you notice, very few lawyers spoke on this issue because it's already before court saw this. So, so, but if it is true that eight members who were, eight members were all proposed, out of 22 sat, illegal, unlawful, constitutional, condemnable. But is that the proposition? Okay. So let, let's get the thought of another legal practitioner, Barrister Dugogo Boigbe. Uh, now, this, the scenario in Benue State, the impeachment notice uh, served on the governor. Do you think it carries the weight of law? Well, uh, on the face of it, uh, I feel it uh, it, 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 it lacks a uh, legal backing on the face of it, or except we're now going to the legal intricacies uh, involved. And I feel the activities uh, going on in Benue State uh, House of Assembly is a serious abuse of the whole political and uh, legislative process. Uh, or, or what grounds will uh, police officers prevent 22 lawmakers from entering the House of Assembly and allow eight of them to enter? and uh, to sit. And then on what basis would they determine that, okay, these 22 members have been uh, uh, suspended, suspended and these ones have not been suspended? And if you want to even look at it, fundamentally, uh, uh, Benin House of Assembly, they have 30 members. So for a quorum, they need 10 members. So there are a lot of legal issues in it. But I want to say that on the face of it is a political embarrassment to that state and to Nigeria. And it shows the state of Nigeria and political uh, on that development that we need a lot of uh, help and prayers so that uh, things can get better for us in this country. So, we we'll just quickly take your parting words. What's the way forward, uh, Comrade Amadi? Quick one. What's the way forward? Uh, the way forward are consigned the issue of Nigeria now. Nigeria yeah, right before now. 2019. Uh, let's not be carried away with this defection and not defection issues. But more importantly, let's remember that we have, have asked or appointed people to give us good governance. Let's first push more for this good governance. And let's check report card of everybody that has been assigned before. And for those who had failed either woefully or manageably, or those who intend to still act, let's see, believe that they still have some time, you know, to act. Whether APT, whether PDP, they were all representative as it were. So check their records by say. For the legislatures, are they supposed to build houses for you or they are to make laws? So in case you want to also check them, Check them on the basis of their constitutionally assigned responsibility. And for the executive, what are they supposed to do for you? So let's go in this manner so we can advance this country. And let's stop being payokia, you know, as it consigns loyalty to party and what have you and make Nigeria uh, belated. Nigeria must come first before every other interest. Thank you. Uh, Andrew, 
Uh, uh, well, I would say yes. We should not. The politicians should not overheat the policy. They should be calm. When somebody is defecting, wishing well. They say, and let us enjoy democracy at this, like he said in the book. We should not, uh, you know, play politics of acrimony. Do or die. No. If you die today, will you still play politics? They should just let us live harmoniously and copy the Western world, how politics is being played, so that people will be interested in playing it. That's my take. Thank you. Dr. Joe Bodion. Thank you very much. The way forward is that I want to just appeal to uh, my, my fellow citizens of this country, Nigerian citizens, uh, the voters, you should see, the, see, see through the rules, you know, the, the, the camouflage of politicians on which other side of the divide. They are just playing games with us. Tomorrow they are friends, tomorrow they are enemies and all that. We should focus on good government, like he said. We should hold them accountable. They should be a man. Those persons who are jump shipping now are jump shipping for only personal purpose. They want to have class, they want to contest, they want to remain in power perpetually. Somebody was going for eight years, he's senior president for four years, he wants to remain there for God, God knows <laughs> okay, when. Okay, thank you, Dr. Odia. <laughs> you should do for governor, not to, get, not, not to applaud people for okay. the thank, thank you very much, Dr. Dion, for your comments. Let's take the parting words of uh, Barrister Duwa. Uh, our leaders, they should have uh, the interests of the people more at heart instead of continuous uh, battle for political power. They should see that basic things of life, security, food, employment is made available for the people. When Nigerians have these things, they will vote for you even inside their dream. You don't need to be some assorting from one political yeah. party to the other. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, uh, my discussants, for your wonderful contribution and comments on today's program. And our viewer out there, thanks for being a part of today's show. If you enjoyed today's edition, then keep a date with us next week for another promising edition. My name is Ego Sagmalao. Bye-bye. Thank you.